Utah's a dry state. Nevada is the only other state in the nation with a drier climate than ours. Keeping up with the growing and thirsty population in a dry region like this is a real challenge. Along the Wasatch Front, when people think about water, they think about reservoirs. Melting snow and runoff are the most visible sources of drinking water. Here in Magda, we're not adjacent to one of these watersheds, so we get our water the way most people in the United States do. We drill for it. Across the country, most people drill down to an aquifer, a layer of rock that collects water. Wells have served mankind since before recorded history. We were not focusing on treating the water. We were focusing on seeing if we had any problems in the water. Nationally, districts around the country have to deal with all kinds of contamination, both natural and man-made. For us in Magna, there were a lot of dissolved solids, minerals and salts, and one regulated chemical, arsenic. The, the limit for arsenic in drinking water used to be 80 micrograms per liter. And then the EPA set a new standard of 10 micrograms per liter. For a while, existing technology could handle these issues, but changes were coming. In 1997, routine testing in the Magna Water well field showed trace elements of a new kind of chemical contamination. A plume from decades-old defense industry had reached the drinking water aquifer and contaminated it with perchlorate. Perchlorate is, a, is actually an industrial contaminant that, um, that has entered the groundwater supply over time. And, um, and so, base, and, and we, we want to remove that from the, from the water supply. Uh, we immediately took action and removed that source from the drinking water system. We had to take the steps now to correct a problem. We want to be proactive with the community and, and uh, get the community involved, protect the public health. And the, that well was shut down. The Magna Water District was already working on ways to keep up with changing water regulations and growing demand. They needed a solution that would work on several different kinds of contamination. We selected electrodialysis reversal, or EDR, to, uh, that would remove both the arsenic and the perchlorate from the, from the drinking water. Electrodialysis reversal, or EDR, is a proven technology, and the district would put it to a whole new use. Uh, this, is, I believe, is the first application for perchlorate removal and, um, and arsenic removal. EDR uses special membranes, which are filters, with the negative and positive electric currents. As water passes through the stack of filters, the impurities are attracted to these charged membranes and are pulled right out of the water. The, the EDR membrane stacks uh, have been used in several different parts of the country, but for, for this particular issue, especially with the perchlorate, uh, this was certainly the, the, the best fit for Magna Water to, to get a, a better quality water. The Magna Water District teamed up with Corolla Engineers, Alder Construction, and others to start work on a new EDR facility. So we were very happy to have Alder and their, their long history of constructing water and wastewater plants uh, be awarded this contract to build this facility. It's been one of the smoother in terms of dealing with subcontractors, uh, dealing with a designer, that has a good design and is willing to uh, help us overcome some issues. Uh, the owner has been very cooperative and very interested in the project and they've been very proactive in the things that we've been doing. So it's been a very successful project from that standpoint. A bond was issued and financial help also came from ATK who had taken over the defense facilities from the original manufacturers. Well it's, it's exciting for us because as engineers and scientists you're always trying to find the best way to solve all the problems that our clients have. So for us to come up with this new use for a process that, is, that has been proven in other applications but could really do wonders in this application is a, is a great, uh, exciting thing for us to be doing. The quality of Magna's drinking water would comply with the government and industry standards, but they still had one problem, what to do with perchlorate once they got it out of the water. The real challenge came in the disposal of uh, the concentrated brine or the waste stream from this treatment process. If you have a separation space process like membranes or ion exchange, you always end up with these concentrate streams that have really high salts and they have really high concentrations of perchlorate, nitrate and other contaminants. Uh, residual contamination that would have to either be landfilled, incinerated, or it would have to be disposed of 
uh, back into the environment, thus perpetuating the contamination. Getting rid of perchlorate turned out to be trickier than expected. We found that the chemical process didn't work. The perchlorate simply goes wherever the water goes and it was not removed chemically, so we had to go to a different concept and we went to a biological process that uses anaerobic bacteria to, to break down the molecule of perchlorate. In other words, they would feed the perchlorate to bacteria. We're going to put them through a biological process where microorganisms take the oxygen from these contaminants and use it for their growth and essentially turn out a, a product that is clean. They, they use the food that's in the wastewater uh, and they combine it with perchlorate uh, as part of their food processing step. And, and the oxygen starved bacteria attack the oxygen on the perchlorate, break that, that bond of four oxygens off of the perchlorate, thus reducing it to chloride. A plaque commemorating Ed Hansen, Magnawater's general manager, along with Jess Brown and Rick Whedon from Corolla Engineers, were awarded a patent in 2007 for a process called Biodestruction of Blended Residual Oxidants, or Biobrox. In May of 2008, the 12-ton vessels that would contain the Biobrox were hoisted by crane, maneuvered by a ground crew, and set into place. Inside, pipes and valves would be fitted and the base would be filled several feet deep with concrete. Then the vessels were filled with granular activated carbon, or GAC, to give the bacteria a place to live and eat. So what I'm holding in my hand is probably has about a couple football fields worth of surface area uh, in it. The reason that's important is that the back, it gives the bacteria a lot of nooks and crannies, places to set up shop. Uh, so they like to, to grow and, and, uh, and live on this activated carbon. Uh, so what happens is that the, the uh, biofilms develop on this activated carbon, the bacteria that comes right from the wastewater. Uh, the water passes over this carbon that have the, the biomass on it, the biofilms on it, and those bacteria in the biofilm just pull the, the perchlorate right out of the water, uh, chew it up, eat it for their, uh, breakfast, and uh, convert it to chloride. This is environmentally friendly. There's no byproduct. We don't have to take it away to a landfill. We don't have to take it to an incinerator. It's done. Uh, that right there economically saves you a lot of money in the long run. So the perchlorate is completely destroyed and so coming out of these bioreactors you have uh, not only perchlorate free water but the bacteria are, are chewing up eating other things in the municipal wastewater that a conventional wastewater treatment plant has to remove. So you're getting a, a removal of perchlorate but also a number of things that um, you'd have to get out of the wastewater anyway. Together, the Magna Water District, Corolla Engineers, Lyle Ford Inc., and Alder Construction, with help from ATK, GE, and others, have put together the first plant of its kind in the world. The hopes of this project is that not only Magna Water will be okay for all Magna residents, but this process will be used nationwide for all communities. The opening of the facility attracted national attention with representatives from Congress and Senator Orrin Hatch taking a first-hand look at the new technology. The Senator commented, it is exciting to know that the project continues to be an efficient and cost-effective solution to the problem of water contamination. This plant removes perchlorate from the environment, treats wastewater so it can be reused, uses very little energy, is built upon a small carbon footprint, and is a sustainable technology for years to come. It has great a greater impact and possible impact for the water industry, whether it be on a drinking water side with endocrine disruptors, pharmaceuticals, and also for reuse, recharge on the wastewater side. So I think it has a very high potential for a national and possibly a worldwide application. The facility here in Magda is not just another water treatment plant, but a model for water and wastewater engineering demonstrating to water districts across the United States and the world how to overcome environmental challenges. Mm -hmm.